Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 release as I'm putting this out. It hasn't even been released yet. It is Tales from Six Feet Under. It is an independent film and it will hit Amazon Prime Video on the 15th of April, which is a uh, Wednesday. Sorry. So Wednesday, April 15th, it'll be available. I don't know what the pricing on it's going to be or anything like that, but um, I was I was reached out to reached out to. <laughs> by the writer, director, editor, musician, basically the guy who did almost everything except some acting um, and some camera work, uh, Nicholas Michael Jacobs. He reached out to me and he said, hey, I did this independent film. Would you be able to review it? Do you have any interest? And I'm like, yes, because I'm not going to turn down doing a review for an independent film. So one of the things I'm going to say up front is I'm, I'm not doing star ratings for anything like this because here's the thing. This is not a studio film it's not getting a theatrical release this is a no budget film just so people know going into it it's a no budget film it's not even low budget like something like the headhunter which had you know was a crazy low budget film that was amazing but that got thirty thousand dollars this one i guarantee was absolutely no budget whatever money was just some pocket change basically I understand what this is like because uh, actually watching this reminded me a lot of my days doing independent film, uh, which, you know, no, there are no budgets. You just get together with your friends and family. You do what you can. You see what everyone has to contribute and you make it work. And it's a fun time usually. And you could tell that there was fun put into this film, um, especially one of the stories because um, it's multiple stories. It's an anthology. But let me go through this a little more methodically. So. Uh, Nicholas Michael Jacobs, who uh, is the visitor in this film, just know that, he plays the visitor, uh, he did films Night and Urban Fears, I have not seen those because they're independent, um, unless I know about them, you know, I, I, I'm not checking them out, so I didn't know about those prior, but I did see Tales from Six Feet Under, uh, it's got like a 45 minute run time, so it's not a huge time commitment, which I actually like, especially for an independent film, um, and like I said, on Amazon Prime Video, available Wednesday, April 15th. And like I said, I don't know the price, but consider throwing this dude and his crew a little bit of cash so they can keep doing films in the future. Uh, this seems heavily influenced by Creepshow, to be honest. That's what I got immediately when you see The Visitor in it. Um, the Visitor is actually someone who kind of ties the whole movie together because it's very Creepshow-like. The Visitor reminds me of Creepshow the structuring of it because it is a horror anthology reminds me a lot of creep show it just fe feels very creep show inspired um which is not a problem because you know we all have our influences from somewhere i have plenty of mine uh but it yeah it just hit me immediately with that uh you can immediately tell it's a no budget film uh and one of the reasons is the acting is good for no budget like it's fine for no budget but you're not going to get amazing performances when you have no budget or it's an independent film usually you know coming from my experience you get friends and people who are willing to just do it for the fun of it or because you buy them lunch or something like that for the day literally that's how it works that's how i did it i was just like hey you want to do this for me and a lot of times people don't even show up i had times where i was doing an, uh, an independent film and people didn't show up that day for shooting so we just on the fly changes script because what else are you going to do? You're there and you're ready to go. Uh, it's in black and white, which um, I feel is a good visual choice for this. And one of the main reasons for that being when it is a no budget film, you have a lot of limitations as far as practical effects and special effects and going black and white actually can hide a lot of um, issues that you would have otherwise. So um, mainly because like with practical effects, you can't get a whole lot of detail if you basically have no budget to it. So um, putting the black and white in there lets you play with shadows more. You can hide the fact that there isn't a lot of detail to any sort of uh, special effects uh, costuming or prosthetics or you know whatever you're using. And so for, th for that reason, it's smart. And one of the things with this film is you can tell that this guy, Nicholas, has done this before. He's done no-budget films before because he knows the limitations of what he's able to do and he finds ways to kind of work around it and adapt with it. This is one of the reasons I like independent film a lot because I feel like you have to be creative. In order to get the film done, in order to make what you want to make, you have to be super creative and you have to work around things. And I feel like when you get to like bigger-budget films, you start to get a... a 
lack of creativity because people have so much money to throw at stuff. Um, so I like when it's smaller budget because you get more creativity. So just saying. This reminded me of that. For how low the budget is, I actually dig the music. That's one of the things I love the most about this. The music was very interesting to me. It was very heavy, heavily like synth-driven. It gave me these 80, 80s vibes, and it actually felt very much inspired by John Carpenter. It had this Carpenter-esque sound to it throughout. And I would be interested to know if Nicholas is a big John Carpenter fan, and if so, if... He feels like his music is inspired by John Carpenter, but it really struck me that way. And I really dug the music in this. I, I really did. It matched quite well. For regular people as actors, the performances were not bad. They're not great, but they're not bad. Like I said, you just you get who you can, and, and that's what no-budget film is about. There's one portion that is extremely meta in this. It is three separate stories that are all brought together under the anthology um, umbrella by The Visitor. And the second story is my favorite by far, and it's very meta, and that's one of the things I loved about it. What It's a cool story, and how meta it is really made me smile, because it's kind of this, well, let me read how I put it down here, because I probably did it better. Uh, I found it fun and funny because it speaks to the struggles of a filmmaker trying to be familiar, but not unoriginal at the same time. Basically, you kind of, like, as a filmmaker, horror filmmaker, horror script writer, you want to be familiar enough that people are going to like what you're doing because they know what you're trying to do, but not be too familiar that people feel like you're ripping someone off or just treading on ground that's already been tread too many times. So for that reason, I really love the second one because it kind of speaks to the struggle of horror filmmakers, especially independent f horror filmmakers, kind of stuck in that spot of, you know, creative issues where you're just like, ah, I want people to like want to see this because it's familiar to them, but then I don't want them once they see it to be like, oh, this is a total rip off of this or that, or it's so unoriginal. And <laughs> the character in that, you you know, it, it's very well driven home that that character is having that struggle. And it makes it funny, intentionally funny, I will say. And what ends up coming together is very unique. Um, individually, not unique, but how everything comes together is very unique. And I liked it, and I loved how funny it was. And that was the best for me. That right there sold me on the film, to be honest. That made me like it a lot. The first story was fine. I, I didn't feel that I was, like, super into it or, or not super into it. I was interested enough to know where it's going. The second one really sold me. And the third one, let me talk about the third one in a minute. I ultimately liked the third one, the ending, that is. But I'll talk a little bit about it in a second. The second, uh, I already talked about it. Um, some uh, Let's talk about the second one. Something that really hit me is the integration of cell phones in this film which I think is really a generational gap thing. And this isn't like a criticism or a strength of the film. It's just a something I noticed while watching it. Is it someone of, you know, being someone of an older generation now? Feels weird to say that, but in comparison to the age of the person who made the film, being in an older generation myself, um, there's a lot of use of cell phones in this. And it's just something that people in my generation and above would not think to do. And it just hit me as, this is interesting because this is from a younger generation. And that just kind of baked into what they know societally. And you write what you know. Like, that's just how it is. So it's just very interesting because I was watching, I'm like, I would never write a script that would have that much cell phone integration into it. But it makes sense that this is being done because that's society, that's culture, that's how these younger generations have grown up. So it just made me think about that, and I thought it was interesting. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. The black and white does make it a little bit hard to read texts in this because there is there is text messaging throughout it when you you know you're seeing the face of the phone as the texting is going on. So the black and white makes it a little bit challenging. The good thing is though. The only portions that makes it challenging to see are the portions that the person whose phone you're seeing is typing out. So you have you have to read it as they're typing it out. The problem is they can go a little bit fast. So you need to be able to read it kind of quick before it gets sent. Because once it gets sent, it's really hard to see. But the incoming text for that phone 
easy enough to see uh, with the black and white. So it's just a little bit challenging visually there, but you know. The other thing about the text though is for my personal taste, I do not like prolonged texting in a film. And actually, I'm not really sure I've really experienced it before, but in this film, it happens in, in a portion. And that for me is too much downtime. It's too, it's too boring. Like literally watching someone text out entire sentences and then getting sentences back and then going back and forth. That's not interesting to me and it's not exciting. And I, I think that's something that maybe should have been changed in the film because I'm going to give, you know, some constructive criticism with this. I think that's something that needs to be changed because it's a little too much downtime in my opinion, but, um, Maybe it's just a generational thing for me, and or maybe it's a personal thing. I don't know. Anyone who's already seen it can make a comment down there. We can talk about that. Um, the ending was a solid way to finish. I was down with it. Um, that third story is the one that has all that texting. So for that reason, it kind of took me out of the story a little bit. But then it comes back uh, in getting me interested again with the very end of it. I did like how it ended with that one. It's a particularly, I don't know how to put it. I don't want to say tense. It's not particularly tense. It's a good horror moment. I guess I could just put it that way. It's a good way to kind of bring it to a close, have a nice horror moment to end it, and go to the credits. So I enjoyed that. Uh, the visitor's face in this actually looks pretty good. Um, I don't know if it was some, it was like something that was purchased or something that was made by someone uh, that Nicholas knew, but... It looked good. It looked pretty good, especially for a no-budget film, to be honest. Looked better than anything I've used in any of my films when I was making films. For the most part, shots are pretty well framed, uh, and there are a few that have some cool angles, to be honest. It's not, you know, you won't watch it and be like, oh my god, the cinematography is so inspired and amazing, and the directing, oh, oh unbelievable. But it's good. And that's the thing. For someone who's younger, for someone who's doing a no-budget independent film, that, like, you don't need to have amazing. Like, you're probably not going to have amazing. And to be honest, when I was watching this, I saw a lot of myself in it. Like, yep, I would frame a shot exactly like that. Yeah, I, it, I totally would. And I've, or I've done shots exactly like that. I've done angles exactly like that. I've framed things like this. So, you know. The, sh the film was shot about one and a half hours from where I live, I realized. So, which I thought that was kind of funny. So, uh, I'm not far from where these people are. Um, that's, you know, considering how big the United States is, it's, that's kind of a funny thing. So anyway, like I said, I'm not going to give a star rating for this because with independent, no budget films, why, you know, you can't compare it. There's just no possibility. I did enjoy it. You know, if you're looking for a unbelievably polished, you know, theater, um, release type film, this is not it. But if you're looking for, to, you know, throw your money to someone who is an aspiring filmmaker who is doing no budget independent film stuff, do it. You know, I, I like I said, I don't know what the pricing is going to be, but if it's a few bucks, consider just throwing out a few bucks. Like I said, the second story in, in particular, I think is a good time. It is fun. And the way it ends is good. So there's fun to be had with this film. Um, I enjoyed myself. I definitely enjoyed myself. And like I said, it's 45 minutes too. So it's not too much of a commitment, which I like. The other thing is this. The horror community is awesome with independent film. I actually have a friend who just recently got finished making an independent film that is not horror. He, I went to the premiere of it and everything. And it's good. It's well done. But I was talking to him and I said, you know, what's your plan for this? Because as far as I know, there isn't a whole lot of a, of a um, market for super independent non-horror genre films and it, it just made me start thinking about how good the the horror community is about supporting and lifting up independent film within the horror community so i said to to the friend i said you know if you want to try to actually make some money um doing independent film i think you should do your next one as a horror film because that community supports it well so that said Keep that in mind. If it's a few bucks on Amazon Prime Video, go ahead and get it. Give it a shot. It's worth it just to encourage these people to continue to do film because we need future filmmakers for the horror industry. We do. Is there a shortage? I don't know. There might be with what's going on. Who knows? But um, I also want to say, uh, Nicholas, thank you for sending this to me. 
um it was fun and um yeah best of luck to you man i see a lot of what i used to do i haven't touched the camera in a long time but i, I see a lot of what i used to do and what you did and uh yeah it kind of resonated with me for that reason so that's cool but anyway thanks everyone for checking this one out uh thank you nicholas thank you to your whole crew and everything but um yeah uh if, if there are other independent filmmakers out there who want to send in uh and ask for reviews you can certainly do that um, at brutal battle podcast at gmail.com brutal is spelled b-r-e-w-t-a-l brutal battle podcast at gmail.com just contact me and if 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 my uh schedule allows which probably it would i'll take care of that but thanks everyone for checking this out do me a quick favor hit the subscribe if you can to show that you like anything that i'm doing do the uh thumbs up uh if you've already subscribed oh and if you are going to subscribe hit the notification bell so you know when i'm doing uh, posting new things, especially when I'm going to be jumping on and doing live streams. It'll let you know when that's happening. Put some comments down there if you've seen this. Um, yeah, and thanks for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.